limited edition Ferrari Alert. This is the rare and desirable Super America, a historic Ferrari name brought back in 2005 as an upgraded 575M with an innovative rotating roof and striking good looks. And this week on Drive Every Ferrari, I've been given the keys to this 1800 mile HGC T-Pack equipped Rosso Corsa example, which is currently for sale here at Bell Sport and Classic and owned by Car Guys viewer Tony. I'm not gonna lie folks, this one has been on my must drive list for some time. And so this week we're gonna look at what makes this limited edition Ferrari special, its history, all of the special features, and of course, what it's like to drive. Welcome to the car guys and welcome to the Ferrari Super America. The Ferrari Super America was launched in 2005 at the Los Angeles and Detroit Motor Shows. It was limited to just 559 units. It was a special customer car, which meant you had to be invited to get one. And brand new, it cost £190,000 before options. It came in manual or paddle shift, but the paddle shift was a £7,000 optional extra. The front of the car is pure 575M, but everything from here onwards has been created specially for this car because of course with the innovative rotating roof it needed an awful lot of structural rigidity and strengthening in order so that it didn't flex in the corners. This is the only time that this innovative rotating roof has been used on any Ferrari probably because it's so flipping expensive I am told they're almost impossible to replace now. The car features additional structural reinforcements to provide rigidity with the roof removed. Stronger sill members, chassis tubes around the central tunnel and A-pillars, and the rear firewall was also strengthened. This modern Super America was named after the limited edition cars that ran from 1956 to 1961, the 410 and the 400 Super America seen here. Let's do a quick walk around and look at the special features of this car. Here we are at the front of the car and as you can see one of the distinguishing features of the Super America are these fabulous 19 inch split rim wheels. They really do look incredible and a unique feature really of this car. As we move back here we've also got two really prominent shark gills evoking the looks of classic V12 front engine Ferraris of old. A few things to highlight the rear of the car. First of all we've got this brushed aluminium fuel filler cap but the main thing that dominates is this big flat rear deck. If you look closely you can see actually the weave of the carbon fibre on this deck lid and you can also see the very hintest flick up at the end because of course no one wanted wings on their Ferrari at this time. You don't really appreciate really the drop down from this part of the rear lid and then it swoops down and plummets all the way down to this point where the rotating roof actually flips down onto. So it has to be like that in order to mirror the curve of the glass itself and for it to sit flush when the roof is down. But from here, it looks like an enormous expanse of Rosso Corsa. It's like an aircraft carrier back here. Another thing you don't notice until you get quite up close is the fact that this Ferrari horse emblem, the Cavallino, actually sits on a raised shield of body color here. On the distinctive rear buttresses of the Super America, you've got Pininfarina written on that side and Super America on this side. Let's have a look in the boot then, shall we? Button pressed inside and lifted up. And as you can see, pretty big boot actually. Considering it's a Grand Tourer, you do have enough space for quite a lot of luggage. You can see in here, we have all of the custom made luggage that you could get with this car. Again, an extremely expensive option, but look at that. Big old case, couple of side cases, and you got room for your car cover as well. And looking at under here, you can see exactly how much carbon. This whole, this whole boot lid is made of carbon fiber. That's why you can see the weave through the paint. Look at that. Now it's time to check out the engine. And as you can see, this engine is enormous. And of course, 
beautiful. It's a 5.7, 65 degree V12, naturally aspirated, of course. Like many of the modern V12 front engine Ferraris, Ferrari has tried to get the engine as far back towards the cockpit as possible. Performance for the Super America is pretty impressive, given the fact this is the mid 2000s and it's such a heavy front engine car. 0-60 comes in 4.2 seconds, it's got 540 brake horsepower and the top speed is 199 miles an hour. Peak torque is 433 pounds feet, which is 588 Newton meters. And the official curb weight, well, I'm afraid it's 1,790 kilograms. So it's no lightweight. This one's twin overhead cams per cylinder bank, four valves per cylinder, and it's dry sumped. It actually delivers 25 brake horsepower more than the 575M, which just about makes up for the difference in weight. That extra horsepower was delivered thanks to higher flow intake tracks, optimized fluid dynamics on the cylinder head inlet ducts, and a new exhaust system. You can get the GTC handling pack for this car, which this one thankfully has. That was a £14,000 option, by the way. And what that gives you is sport suspension that's stiffer by 35% at the front and 15% at the rear, greater rigidity overall, a sports exhaust, red brake calipers, and ceramic brakes. You've also got a 105 litre fuel tank because, of course, this is a Grand Tourer. Make no mistake. Now let's look inside. Small little handle. Oh. Wow. Let's close this up. Well, obviously, it's very, very hot in here. It's a sunny day. It was supposed to be raining, but wouldn't you know it? And as you'd expect, it feels as special and as much of an event in here as it does from the outside. I just cannot get over how showroom fresh this example is. 1800 miles this car's done since 2006. And it feels, as you'd expect, brand new. We've got similar over bolstered Daytona style seats, just like you had in the 430. Very comfortable, but you can adjust them. So we've got an enormous center console here, rising right up beyond my knees. And in that, we've got a tray here for your knickknacks. We've also got your ashtray, of course, curved and in full leather. And we've also got a rather nice storage compartment here, just in the rear tunnel. This is a paddle shift example of the Super America. So you can see, got those here, and it means you have one of these little winkies to control the reverse gear, and also to take you out of the full auto mode and into manual on the paddles. And you can also turn off the traction control. We've got the Ferrari stereo here, which you probably will never turn on because of course, when you've got a V12 like this one, why would you ever listen to music. Just above the stereo, we've got all of the climate controls and also some of the controls for other parts of the car, notably the electric windows, but also you can select the sport mode, which is the damper setting, sport and comfort, just like on a 355. You've also got your fog lights, your parking lights, and the heated rear screen. Characteristic of V12 Ferraris, we've got these three enormous vents set here in the dashboard. You can see that we've got black leather on the top to prevent reflections and then beautiful beige leather everywhere else with red stitching. It's uh, It certainly does feel like an event. We've also got these interesting little slats here in the leather which emulate the ones on the front of the car. The steering wheel has nothing on it except the horn. It's a good size, nice and thin, and I've no doubt will be a pleasure to use. But remember, so this is pre any of that Manatino gubbins and all of those extras that they now shove onto the steering wheels to make it look like a Formula One car. Ahead of me, I have a very similar display to the 430 and actually the Challenge Stradale. So I've got three dials on the left of me, which covers the temperature and pressure of the oil and water. I've got a central rev counter in the middle, which has got a space to show you what gear you're in if you have a paddle shift car. If not, it's blank. And then, of course, you've got the speedo on the right hand side, which goes up to 220 miles an hour. There's a Formula One world champion plaque down here to my right, which shows that the last world championship was 2004 at the point where this car was sold. And we've got the Super America plaque there on the glove box, limited production, 
nine. And interestingly, this one doesn't have a push button electronic glove box. You actually open it using a finger. But of course, the thing that you wanna know most about are these controls right here. Now this is something you will find on no other Ferrari, and it is a tint control and the button to operate this revolving roof. When the car is locked, it automatically goes to its darkest tint setting, but we've got one, two, three, four, five different tint settings that we can control. And depending on what you select, the electrochromatic technology will put an electric current through the glass and change the tint. So you can have it light or you can have it darker. It takes 60 seconds to go from its darkest to lightest tint. And when the engine is off, the tint goes to its darkest. But now I think it's time to demonstrate this car's party piece which is the roof. Sound good to you? Excellent, let's do it. This is the first and only Ferrari to feature the rotating roof, which is actually called the Reva Cromico, and it was designed by Leonardo Fioravanti. That's right, the same dude that created the Daytona and the 308, among many others. The roof itself is approximately one meter square at 1130 millimeters by 840 millimeters, and it takes less than 10 seconds to go up and down. And it sits on top of the rear deck so that no boot space is taken up. So what you do is you pull down the handle and then you actually have to twist it. And then before you know it, the roof opens up. Look at that. And now we have full open air Super America action. And now let's see what it's like to put it back up again. Ready? Isn't this the coolest roof? And then you twist that like that, put it back up, and hey presto, your roof's back on. Now remember, this is before Ferrari used that Fiat sourced folding roof technology, which it now uses on every single convertible car that it makes. So this was kind of the first step to going towards that new folding hard top technology, the retractable hard top. This of course is glass, it's reinforced with carbon fiber. You can see the carbon fiber all around the frame. You've got electrochromatic technology to tint it. And obviously you've got this beautiful fold at the back and it's built into a very bespoke mechanism. Now, the problem with that is it is ferociously expensive and you can kind of see why it never appeared again. I think now it's time to go for a drive. Here we are then, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Ferrari Super America. It's my first go. So I've got the roof up just temporarily as there is a slight shower. But as soon as that has gone, believe me, that roof is coming down. I've also got to get a little bit of fuel because we are where well, we are completely on empty. So first job of the day is to get some fuel and then we can have a little bit of fun. We've got some fuel. We've got a beautiful sunny day, more better than I could ever have hoped. And I'm in a Super America, the first time I have ever driven this car. First things first is we're gonna to have to put the roof down, obviously, but the first thing you notice is that you've got that early paddle shift generation. So this is the same sort of ones you get in the Challenge Stradale, where you have to kind of lift your foot a little bit off the throttle when you make the change. Otherwise, yeah, it doesn't really work very well. You've got to sort of like ease it in. It's not something that you can hard charge around. This is very much more of a grand touring gearbox. It doesn't really seem to like being rushed that much. Right, here we go. So, twist it round, press the button. Oh, I'm gonna put the handbrake on, and there goes the roof, and immediately it's transformed into one of the most special cars that Ferrari has ever made. Off we go. Now, now you're being interesting. Now we are in an open top, front engined, V12 Ferrari, and there can be nothing better on this earth than this. Obviously, standard operating procedure with the car guys, no dark glasses, out of respect for you. 
Now you had to be invited to own one of these cars when it originally came out in 2005. This is a 2006 car. It's done just 1,800 miles. So I am hugely indebted to its owner, Tony, who graciously said I could drive this car today. Remember, values of Super Americas have always been pretty high. This one is currently worth 300 thousand pounds which is a significant premium over a 575m but what you're paying for there ladies and gentlemen is rarity there's only 559 of these and even less right hand drive examples i can only speculate how few there must be of those the steering is light there's lots of feel there's no there's no gizmos on it so it's actually quite a nice little thin steering wheel perfectly balanced perfectly sized the paddle shifts are exceptionally light. They're thin aluminium, and they have a very balletic, delicate feel to them, which doesn't in massively inspire confidence because they do feel like they're gonna break at any second. You get a slight little tsk noise, and then the gear will come along when it's good and ready. This is no F12. You do not get immediate gear changes with this. You press, you flick the paddle, and there's the change and we flick it again, there's the change. So there is quite a noticeable delay, but this is one of those early paddle shift gearboxes. Started off, remember, in the 355. Now, once you're in the car, it doesn't feel as large as it looks on the outside. Now, this one's got the handling pack, so that means we've got stiffer springs all round, but we also have a sports exhaust and ceramic brakes. So this is really the one to have. In fact, I don't think it is an understatement to say that Tony's car here, which is for sale right now, by the way, is probably the best one in the world. It's incredibly low mileage. It's got all the options that you want. So, I mean, some lucky person is going to get this car pretty soon. I've already had to get the hang of the little winky reverse gear, which I don't really like in a Ferrari. I much prefer a big old manual gate, uh, this sort of thing as it is in the Porsche. Yeah not really my scene it's a little bit too uh what's the word camp when you enter a corner you think it would roll quite a bit but actually it doesn't that's probably the handling pack doing a lot of that magic but um it's well composed you get an initial movement in the steering wheel because it's so light which you think will be followed by roll but actually not so much not so much it handles really well oh, and my god wow Look at this for English countryside on a sunny day. It was raining this morning. I was a bit worried, but my goodness. Oh, let's test those brakes. Yeah, there's not a huge amount of feel. I was kind of expecting them to feel a bit more beefy, but I think if you hoof them, you probably do get the stopping power, but the initial pedal travel is not particularly inspiring. Oh, wow. There you go, see the slight delay in the gear changes. Oh yeah, look at this, I mean, come on. What a lucky boy I am. I am driving a Super America on a sunny day. I've just filled it up with petrol. Tony has said that there's no real restrictions with what I can do with this car, despite his value, which just goes to show what a top guy he is. So we get to have the full Super America experience. But now I think we've put it off long enough. I think now it's time to experience some Super America Car Guys beans, okay? Second gear. Are you ready, folks? <laughs> and as you can see, it's, it's actually very relaxed. It's very civilized. Even when you boot it, it doesn't really lose its composure. It just suddenly goes from here to here very smoothly. It's quite odd, actually. It's a very strange sensation. This is not a balls-out racer like the uh, F12 or the 599. Now, although there's a quite a lot of stiffening in the body shell and quite a lot of carbon, I am noticing quite a bit of scuttle shake. There's no way you can avoid it. On something this big, with such a heavy engine in the front, if you take off a massive piece of the structure, it's gonna wobble a bit. There's only so much you can do with physics. 
and this does feel yeah a bit wobbly a bit wobbly I think even Ferrari recognized that if you chop out a piece of metal from the roof especially in 2005 you're not going to suddenly end up with a track monster you can now of course modern building techniques a lot more use of carbon but back then not so much I'm loving the interior of this car it does feel appropriately special for a limited edition car that glass roof panel actually when it folds back the rear part of it with the uh, heated windscreen actually doubles up as the wind deflector so it's quite a clever design really and because we've got that gargantuan bonnet ahead of us you think it would be quite intimidating but it isn't really you just get to enjoy looking at these sumptuous sweeping curves right in front of you you just point the bulge at the apex and that's where you're gonna go I've now flicked it into the sport suspension settings let's see how that feels it was already pretty firm ah yeah now I've got no roll whatsoever it is a it's as flat as a mill pond this thing oh look at that this is quite an, oh that's a corner that is a corner folks oh, oh yeah the overriding feeling whilst driving it is of a relaxed Grand Tourer in no way is this car goading me into ripping up the tarmac and flying along at a ridiculous pace it is very much a cruiser its whole character the way the revs build the smoothness of the engine the suppleness of the suspension it all goes to make you feel like this is something for long distance driving this car wants me to drive down to the euro tunnel go across into france drive all the way down to the south of france then maybe meander along past Monaco and then down into Italy that's what it wants me to do that's what it's telling me to do I can hear it gently whispering in my ear to go on an epic Italian road trip that's just what this car wants it's what it deserves so what do I like about the Super America well I have to say I love the looks I think the stance of the thing on those 19 inch split rims is absolutely unbeatable it's got that same stance that the 812 GTS has there's something so intrinsically right about it whether it's the buttresses whether it's the long nose coupled with that short cabin which is then chopped off who knows but I think it looks stunning roof on or roof off to be honest obviously the engine the power that you get from it I love the interior I love how well appointed it is I like the plaques I like the sense of history and occasion that this really is a limited edition Ferrari I mean can there be anything better than that I like the way it pitches into a corner and I like the way it handles it and I like the way it exits a corner on power and I like how smooth and refined and pleasurable and relaxing it is to drive many different miles what do I not like about it the gearbox if I could find a manual one of these that would be the sweet spot but then obviously that would probably be half a million pounds I think the manual gearbox just transforms these big front engine v12s they're always better when you've got that and this early generation paddle shift just doesn't really cut it, it cut, it's at odds really with it it is a relaxed gearbox so it should match the relaxed nature of the car but you don't really want to have to jerky progress as a result of it the engine isn't as loud as I was expecting I thought with the roof off it would be a raucous trumpeting orchestra but actually it's so silky smooth that it isn't it's actually very soft it's very quiet that is a surprise and I think if I'm being honest I expected the Super America to be a bit more of an animal I didn't expect it to be this quiet I didn't expect it to be this refined I think I like my Ferraris with a little bit more of an edge to them and this one doesn't have that it's beautiful it's historic it's rare it is a glorious red open-topped v12 Ferrari so obviously we're talking about degrees here of excellence to me I like my Ferraris with a bit more bite and now sadly I think it's time for me to take this car back to Bell Sport and Classic and hand back the keys. Thanks for watching this episode of The Car Guys on the Ferrari Super America, an extremely special limited edition Ferrari as part of the Drive Every Ferrari series.
Hope you liked the episode. Hope you found it interesting and entertaining. If you like what we're doing on The Car Guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week. Thank you.